North Sunnyvale community forest of more than 120,000 trees includes many great or unique trees. They should all be honored for the way they help our community, cooling with their shade and the moisture they transpire, cutting noise, cleaning the air, and of course their beauty. This is the start of a project and it honors some, but this is an ongoing project and everyone is welcome to suggest favorites. The Grecian strawberry tree is a small, decorative tree that works well with our native environment and soils. With careful pruning, the interesting bark and branch structure can be revealed. This tree could be used for screening. The bark is a dark red and peels like that of a manzanita. The flowers are like those of our native madrone, a very close relative. Leaves are a dark green under good conditions. The fruit, like that of the common strawberry tree, resembles a strawberry. This strawberry tree is from Greece, which has a climate and soil much like the Bay Area. Therefore, the tree can be treated as if it were a native. This stately oak has graced our city for over 200 years, providing habitat for birds, butterflies, and a wide variety of insects and animals, including man. It is designated a heritage tree by the city of Sunnyvale, our way of honoring and protecting significant trees. The leaves and acorn are typical for oaks. People enjoyed its shade and coolness for years, walking around under it and holding weddings, meetings, reunions, what have you. All that walking around almost killed the tree because it compacted the soil and drove out the air. Our street tree crew saved it by digging up the soil around the trunk, breaking it up and replacing it. Then they fed the tree and removed dead wood. Once again, the tree is healthy and ready for another 200 magnificent years. This is the California native oak and can survive with no help. It is about the only native oak that can survive turf grass conditions. The monkey puzzle tree is an oddity and it's nice to know that there's one around somewhere. Contorted branches and sharp pointed leaves gave it its name. How's a monkey to make a home out of that? Like its close cousin, the bunya bunya tree, it has a 10 to 15 pound seed cone, poised to come crashing down at any moment. There are those contorted branches and pointy leaves. Because of its unique qualities, it has been designated a cultural heritage tree by the city of Sunnyvale. If you can figure out where to plant a monkey puzzle or bunya bunya tree, the rest is easy. Our community forest includes hundreds of coast redwoods, many of them designated heritage trees. These redwoods were selected because of their historical significance. These trees were designated heritage trees in honor of Mr. Sunnyvale himself, Manuel Vargas, who helped plant the trees in 1900. He lived this 93 years in Sunnyvale volunteering his services throughout his life. For example, 40 years as a volunteer deputy sheriff. Redwoods are easy to grow. The problem is to grow anything else near them.
Buck oaks are great shade trees for a large yard and a hot, dry summer. Ferdinand the Bull lounged under one in that delightful children's story. Other good specimens can be seen in the back of the library and at 1215 Mandarin Drive. The leaves and acorns are typical for oaks. The thick bark provides corks for bottles, fishing, bulletin boards, floors, many, many uses. This oak is native to Spain with a hot, dry summer similar to ours, and rains in Spain come mainly in the winter. Camel ash is a good whole yard shade tree. The tree shown is the largest specimen in Sunnyvale. This is a good selection for the very difficult soils in North Sunnyvale, north of the 101 freeway that is. Although the tree is evergreen, it thins out in winter and lets in more light. This picture was shot in January. The surface roots of this tree are greedy and need lots of room. The soil around the base of this tree is raised at least three feet. Saucer magnolia provides lots of color in the dead of winter when we need it the most. In the summer, this is a small decorative tree with interesting branches, or it could be used as a large bush. Abundant flowers light up the tree in the winter. In the summer, the leaves give a good green. Since the tree needs good drainage and has problems with any salt buildup, soil management is most important. Date palms are erect trees for a sweeping driveway or a border. In a small yard, they can take on the aspects of a telephone pole. These trees were planted by the pioneer Murphy family to line the driveway to their house. They are designated heritage trees by the city of Sunnyvale. The flowers and fruit are attractive features. Orioles frequently nest in palm trees. Care is minimal for date palms, however, there is the problem of removing dead fronds. California's mightiest oak, grand for a large outdoor area, but too much for the average home yard. Even in the dead of winter when the tree has lost its leaves, it still is magnificent and protects against the cold weather, it cuts noise, and it cuts the wind down. The leaves and acorn are typical for oaks. The trunk is massive. Valley oaks at the following locations have been declared heritage trees, the Cala Center and Ives Terrace. Valley oaks are easy to care for, but they're difficult to grow in a turf grass setting or any setting which requires regular summer water. The large white flowers of the star magnolia are certainly welcome in the dead of winter. tree in summer is very decorative and can be used as an accent plant. Treat the star magnolia as a garden plant. Make sure that there are no salt buildups and that there is good drainage.
The Montezuma cypress is a graceful evergreen for a large area, but it can become huge. A specimen growing in Oaxaca, Mexico, is possibly the largest tree in the world, but it took 3,500 years to get there. The trunk is like that of a bald cypress to which the Montezuma cypress is closely related. The leaves are quite soft. The rate of growth is set by the amount of water. The more water, the faster it grows. Cedars are trees for a large area. They can be pruned to contain size, but they quickly revert to a large size. They produce a lot of pollen. Deodar cedars have a softer, finer texture than the other cedars. Care is minimal for the cedars, but they do require pruning to allow space under the tree. Kempfer is a very attractive tree for a large area. Kempfer is derived from the leaves, bark, and twigs of the tree. Greedy roots make it a poor choice for a garden bed. The southern magnolia is a large tree that provides heavy shade. This southern magnolia has been declared a heritage tree by the city of Sunnyvale and is known as the Casa del Mas Magnolia. It's difficult to grow anything under a southern magnolia, even grass. Leathery leaves, which fall through the year, are a constant problem. Acacias are tough little trees that can survive drought, winds, and most soils. They can be pruned mercilessly and usually respond with vigorous new growth. These are fast growers and can reach 20 feet in three years. The flowers vary from deep yellow to white, but add color in midwinter. They are often accused of causing allergic reactions that are really the fault of conifers blooming at the same time. These trees need little or no water and little or no anything. The white peppermint eucalyptus can be pruned for use as a small tree or yard tree, or left unpruned to show its weeping form. The white to tan peeling bark is one of its best features. This tree does well in the Bay Area, but does not do well in either warmer or cooler climates. Flowering peach puts on a spectacular show in winter or spring, depending upon how cold and late the winter is. For the rest of the year, the flowering peach functions as a small tree. Prune heavily after flowering for a good show the following year. Lavish care on peaches during the late summer and early fall for good production of flower and peaches the following year.
This Blenheim apricot orchard is our orchard. It is owned by the city of Sunnyvale and maintained by Charlie Olson. In return for this maintenance work, the Olsons harvest the fruit. The Sunnyvale Heritage Foundation is preparing an exhibit to celebrate Sunnyvale's past as one of the world's leading fruit producing areas. The flowers, followed by the fruit, make this a very attractive tree. Just ask any bird. It's best to prune apricots in July or August to avoid problems with the Eutypa fungus. The Dawn Redwood is a large tree that looks best in a grove but can be used alone in a lawn. Although this particular tree is located in a backyard, it can be viewed from across the street. This tree is designated a heritage tree because of its unique features. A redwood with soft, light green leaves, and it is deciduous. This tree is resistant to oak root fungus. The Sydney blue gum is a large tree for any soil. It is known as the fastest grower among the fast growing eucalyptus. It works well as a windbreak without the brittle limb problems of the other big blue gums. The leaves are a darker green than the other eucalyptus leaves, but they do retain that smell. The bark, if you like a peeling bark, this is a tree for you. So far, these specimens are growing well in the bayland soil, which destroys many trees. 